different to start off with. Did you meet with, did you get a chance to chat with Natalie Randolph, the female coach? I did. Yeah. I did. She was uh, in her in the interview when I came in. Congratulated her and wish her good luck this year. Can you imagine uh, when you were in high school? Uh, yes. It looks so petite, you kind of wonder how she can handle those big guys. I think when I was in high school, we had a lot more guys go off to the football team than she was coaching. <laughs> <laughs> The guys you gave yesterday off, do you see the positive impact? Yeah, usually there's more bounce in their legs, especially yeah, one if they're a little if they have a little age on them. Number two, if they're injured the year before, usually it's uh, an extra day recovery time. It's sure. and they look good when they come out. And I think we saw that today. The and guys we, who were off today were they, they were all resting the winters. No, we just had a couple off today. And, uh, they went still went through uh, installation. Still went through individual drills. Uh, not many out there today that weren't practicing. Where do things stand with Jamal, Coach? Uh, he's just a little banged up. You know, anytime you have surgery <coughs> like he did and you get back after it and uh, work pretty hard like he's been working, you know, there's always a little setback. But after the MRI came back and it was negative, you know, there's just a little soreness there and he's just working through it. Practiced a little bit today, but <coughs> in the one on ones, you could tell he was a little bit tired. So went and pushed it. And, uh, should be back tomorrow or the next day. Malcolm getting any closer? Yeah, he's getting closer, but you can see, you know, through his rehab work, he's still not there. And those guys are working extremely hard when they're in rehab, and you, know, you can just see that uh, you know, he's not 100% yet, and we don't want to set him back and throw him out there too early. Mike, as long as he plays in the four preseason games, is that enough time for him to make his case? Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of time in four preseason games. You just don't want him to set himself back, and when he goes back another two weeks, you know, he's very close to getting ready to practice and show us what he can do and hopefully by Monday he can do that. Mike, uh, Albert looks like he's ramping it up out here. I don't know if that's a fair assessment. Is that a fair assessment? Well, we're doing, in fact, we're doing an MRI today because his, you know, his knee has been a little bit sore, more sore than it has been in the past. In the past, every third or fourth day, you know, it would be a little sore and according to the trainers. Uh, but now it's been a couple days uh, consistently sore. So. Just preventive measures. We're going to MRI and see if you know if he's okay, and then we'll go through the rehab work to get him stronger. So, Mike, you obviously, I mean, if he's getting an MRI, you obviously can't any any time soon here attempt the conditioning test again. It, I mean, that's fair to say, right? Well, just wait and see. I mean, that's why he gets treatment. He was out there doing some individual work today, and it was a lot further ahead today than I thought he would be. So. You know, today it, it surprised me in how well he did during the drill work. So we'll just wait and see. Have Jim and Jacob reported to you that he's feeling more comfortable in the scheme, although it's just mentally? It takes time. You know, one of the reasons that he's out there working on the work, we use sort of terminology and put him through things he hasn't done. And, you know, it's a process. Will the knee change at all, whether or not he would have to pass the test because I'm able to take it? Explain what, you, what the question is. Well, if the knee keeps him from taking the test, and is will he still have to pass the test before he can play well, with you the can't practice, you, know, you can't practice. You can't practice. The knee's not strong enough. You can't do drills and push off of it. You can't run. You can't run. You, know, you can't play. Mike, you know, obviously he's not going to play in the first preseason game. And, you know, you, you don't have a lot of veterans to do that anyway. But by as we get into practice after that first preseason game, don't you have to start inserting him so that, you know, by the third game, this guy can be getting some reps? If you take a look at last year, how many games he played without practicing, we got to make sure that he can practice so he can stay healthy and play at a very high level. I can't tell you how many, I got all the stats in there, how many games that he played where he didn't practice throughout the whole week. If you don't practice throughout the week, the chance of you practicing, if, if you don't practice, you're not going to play well. And you got to practice well to play well. Uh, that's just, uh, that's what the NFL football is all about. Every once in a while, you might get a guy in there that practices a little bit and has a good game, but if you don't practice consistently, it's hard to play consistently. And that's what I'm after. I'm after him playing well for the whole season. I mean, say, take a look at uh, his injuries last year. I mean, it was going to practice. If you can't practice, you're not going to get the job done. So my job is to make sure that he can play the best once we start our season. And that's to get him in football shape. And if he's not ready to go, make sure that uh, when he is ready to go, he can go to full speed. Mike, fairly or unfairly, he has a reputation of, of being a guy who people have questioned in his past if he has always been legitimately injured. And I know fans are questioning that now. I, I, I don't, you know, let's not, we talked about it on 
I'm, all I'm telling you is that we're going to get them ready to play. I'm not going to answer any questions like that. That's all speculation. I'm just going to treat Albert the way I treat any other player. He's going to see what he can do on the practice field and try to get him in the best shape possible. I'll do that with every one of our players on our football team. It's like Malcolm Kelly. I'm not going to throw him out there before he's ready to play. Mike, uh, Roger Goodell said that he, uh, his office met with Santana Moss uh, about these uh, HGH reports that came out in May. Um, did, did they meet with you at all, that, their office? No. You know, I don't even like the insinuation when you, when you say things like that because, like I told you, I could give you 50 names of different people that doctor met with, some high-profile names. So when you mention something like that to me, it, it insinuates that there's possibly some guilt. And, um, unless you have some facts to back it up, I, I would wish you'd go another direction. Mike, you had the officials out here for the first time today, getting, getting these guys in the mix. Uh, was, is that something like you get these players, you know, dealing with that aspect of it? Yeah, every year we get the officials in for three or four days. They'll come in tonight, address the team, talk about the new rule changes, difference, uh, differences in the umpire this year, you know, where he's located, and just the basic rules. And it's nice to have them out there for a few days, and players can ask questions, have them in their meetings, and it's three days that's worthwhile for us. Do you start working these guys right now, Mike? For calls yeah, yeah I do. I've got to ask him to a little bit. Mike, when you were looking at reducing the 80 to 53, especially with young guys, how much weight do you put on the practices versus the preseason games? You know, obviously both are important, but there's, you know, kind of it's a combination of everything you do. Yeah. You know, it's just not, you know, the summer camp is part of the off-season <laughs> program. And, it is game situations, and guys respond in game situations, and they go the other direction and lose their focus. So I can't say just one thing, but collectively, you know, there's a lot of evaluation going on. When you look at a guy like when you look at a guy like Laron, who's such a great athlete, um, is part of his challenge keeping control on the field, knowing when to lay the hit, not over pursuing. Is that kind of a battle for a guy like that who can really fly? Well, Laurent's got so much uh, speed, like he indicated, that uh, you know part of it is kind of slowing the game down. It's a lot of film study, and he was at a lot of our OTAs, and I think he really improved in our OTAs when he was out there. Uh, and it's an ongoing battle. And the more more of a student of the game you are, especially at the safety position, the more you're going to make plays. And I'm excited about him because we'll, we'll hopefully we'll put him in a position to make a lot of plays. Because you don't want to hold him back, right? I mean, you want him just to be able to go with his instincts and fly. Well, we're not going to hold him back, but at the same time, you get the game has to slow down for you. You know, you just can't be running the run. There's times to run, there's times to you know lay back, and hopefully he'll learn that with our system here over the next uh, four preseason games. Mike, you talked the other day about sending uh, Ray to Hawaii with uh, Kima. Um, Kimo said it saved him about seven pounds, him being there. Good mm -hmm. investment for you? Yeah, you know, some guys know exactly what they're going to do when they're away. And Kimo said, hey, I got a big family. There's no way I'm going to practice two times a day, so <laughs> come with me. I said, there's a smart man. And so he worked out early and he worked out late. And uh, you know, Kimo's a guy that I was thinking about giving him a day off. And he said, hey, I'm a, I'm a high coach. I, I got to go. And for a guy that was off for a year, Practicing two times a day, all through OTAs, you know, losing a bunch of weight, getting back in football shape. It's nice to see his, you know, his mindset and his condition has really improved. Did you, did you make Ray take vacation time for that or not? I did. <laughs> <laughs> like after eight days, can you give an assessment of the rookies that were drafted, how they performed so far? Well, like I said, it, it, I don't want to go specific in each rookie because you know, we could sit here and talk forever. But you know, it's an ongoing process. Usually, the first week. We're throwing so much at them, uh, like we have, uh, even through today. And now we've got a whole offense in, a whole defense in, our special teams package. Now we can go back and review things, not only from uh, this summer camp, but through our OTAs, which we've done a couple of times when we had the 20 practices. So now they're feeling more comfortable with our terminology, more comfortable with their system. Now we get a chance to see them in preseason games and you know, over the next uh, week as well. Coach, how much have you had to, has the weather here? been a challenge in terms of keeping guys hydrated, recognizing um, whether they're competitive, you know, really trying to keep them fresh. We gave <coughs> veterans off, some veterans off yesterday, but what kind of precautions um, are you taking knowing the weather around here? Well, so far it's been very easy because the weather's cooperated. We tried to order that weather and the guy upstairs cooperated with us and it doesn't happen all the time. You know, you're, you're, we're very lucky that we've got the weather that we've had. 
probably saw me today. You know, I was in a uh, wetsuit today. It comes in, I try to get a feel for how the players are doing. You know, wear a little black uh, long sleeve suit. Where I kind of get a feel for how the players are. It was even hot today. You know, it was fine for about the first hour. It was hot for that second hour. So it was a good practice for us. You know, we need that heat. So we're going to have to play in it. And I kind of like starting early where it's not quite as, as hot. Mike, when do you expect Bobby Turner? What's that? She just asked Bobby Turner. Yeah, he does that all the time. So. <laughs> when do you expect Mike to really then? I don't know. I don't know. Mike's got a concussion, and you know you don't know what those concussions. You know, it's, it's, uh, he's had one before. Uh, it's just, you just have to wait and see. Coach, you've got two of the all-time greats being inducted in the Hall of Fame uh, this weekend with Emmett Smith and Jerry Rice. What will you take away from their careers going up against them? Well, you know, I coached, you know, Jerry, I was with Jerry for a few years, and, you know, Jerry, you know, is one of the best players, if not the best player, I mean, ever played the game. I don't think I've ever been around a guy that practiced like he did. You know, in the offseason, he'd be in there eight hours a day, he'd be relentless. Not only did he work out, but he studied film, you know, his goal was to be the best that ever played the game in any position, and he worked at it. You know, in all the years I was with him, he never missed one workout. And I'd get in there at 5 o'clock in the morning and Jerry would be in there. And he'd, he'd work out as hard as anybody I've ever been around. One of the reasons why he was so good, played so long. And Emmett, uh, coaching at Florida for four years, you know, I followed their program and got a chance to know Emmett. Besides being a great football player, he's a class guy. So see those two guys go in together, very special. In the dog days of training, <coughs> you consider uh, setting up a scrimmage with another team or inter spots scrimmage or just happy to wait for the first preseason game? You know, we have done that in the past. You know, uh, when I was at Denver, I mean, if it worked out where you're playing a team, you know, home and home, and uh, we would do that. I thought the first year we'd stay away from that, you know, just try to get our system in. Maybe in years to come we'll try that a little bit more. But with four preseason games, I didn't think you have to do it. If it goes to two in the future, you know, some teams will do that more, maybe even scrim some of the younger guys, evaluate some of the young guys. Have, have you liked having camp here so far? I have. It's worked out pretty good. It's worked out pretty good. You know, we get everybody staying, you know, within two miles of the facility. Uh, it is like a camp for them. You know, they don't leave to 9.30 at night. they got curfew at 11. And they get in here nice and early, and I think they'll be happy when it ends. No reason to ever leave here, then, right? Probably. You got that. You need that treadmill in there too, don't you? What's that? You, they, you needed that treadmill in there, don't you? We got to put a lot of. Stuff <laughs> hey, Mike. Uh, London's obviously been pretty effective as a tackler, a pro bowler. He said he's blitzing now for the first time since maybe his fourth year in Buffalo. Can you talk a little bit about how you see him adjusting to three four and what more he can add to his game this season in the defense? Well, I think London is, you know, is a very, very solid football player. London can play any defense, three four, four three. You know, London's a student of the game. He's just such a class individual. And if you had all guys like London Fletcher, you wouldn't need coaches. So I'm glad they're not all like London because uh, <laughs> you know, that's what you that's what you work for, and that's that's what you're hoping you have. Because he's just a natural leader, and uh, I'm just glad we got him. How do you think the wide receivers are grasping the offense at, at this point in camp? Injuries to Kelly aside and injury to Furry aside, how do you? Think what do you think? How, what have you seen from the wide receivers so far? Well, you know, it's not just a wide receiver; it's any position. I think it's a challenge in you know, the first five, six days in the offense installation, especially ours, because we really challenge all the different positions that are passing. So you know, they got a, they got a lot to learn. But uh, now we isolate it down a little bit, get ready for a new plan, and things kind of clear up a little bit. How is Furry? By Thanks. Oh. How is Furry? By uh, he, he already answered it, Jeff. Yeah, concussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's I didn't hear your question done, sir.